Okay, everyone. So just uh, as we start out, uh, uh, close your eyes. Uh, and uh, the beautiful thing about closing the eyes is that so much of the information that comes into us is blocked out. Uh, and we can start to feel the body far better as a consequence. Uh, so close your eyes and start by feeling the body. Uh, making sure that you are comfortable, first of all, don't have any pains. Uh, 45 minutes is a fair amount of time, so uh, you want to sit in a posture you can keep for about 45 minutes. Uh, so just uh, take a bit of time to be find that comfort of the body here. Uh. And uh, then uh, uh, relax the body, relax the mind. Uh, the two go together very strongly. So if you focus on relaxing the body, uh, the mind will also relax as a consequence. Uh, so just allow things gradually to relax. Uh, and sometimes that just means being patient. Uh, it just means waiting. Uh, and just kind of just enjoying the peace of uh, being here in good company with good people. Uh, just sitting back and allowing things to gradually fade away, the world fading away uh, and allowing the spiritual qualities uh, to arise in uh, their place. Uh.
And the best way to relax is often just to allow the world to flow. It is all the interference with the world that creates the tensions and the problems. But when you just allow things to flow, there is no resistance. There is no holding on. There is nothing to feel tense about anymore. So just allow things to flow naturally. And it's very important to be able to do this. You have to be non-judgmental. The moment you judge, that is also the moment you start to control. So don't judge. Don't judge yourself. Everything is okay for this period of meditation. Just allow whatever comes up to flow. The thoughts, external things, whatever it might be. Just go with the flow. Enjoy the flow. Be aware of what is happening.
And uh, if you find that there are obstacles in the mind, like thinking, for example, uh, often the way to overcome the thinking uh, is to know that there is no solution in the realm of thinking. Uh, you're not actually making the future in this way, uh, not really resolving any real issues. Uh, if you want to create the future, uh, you have to do it now by making good karma, by having a gentle, kind and peaceful heart. That is where you create the future. Uh, and once you get that simple point, very gentle, be very gentle with yourself, but once you understand that, uh, the mind loses a lot of the interest in thinking, uh, because actually it doesn't take you where you think you want to go. Uh.
Okay, everyone, so coming close to the end of this little meditation. Uh, before you come to the end, I recommend you always to evaluate what has happened. Uh, and uh, if you do feel a bit more peaceful, at ease, relaxed, uh, anything positive, uh, always ask yourself why this is the case. Uh, how do these things come about? Uh, Okay, everyone, so that's uh, just a little bit of meditation for you. Oh, uh, any questions uh, before I, before we do? Yes, please, sir. So, uh, when you're meditating, uh, um, so you, you can't you think about the breath, yeah. in and out of breath. But sometimes, uh, then sometimes the mind goes here and there, so yeah. you're aware of that. But then sometimes you get a, that peaceful, uh, like uh, like color, like thing. And then like if you just sometimes I feel that when I concentrate on that, I become more peaceful than the breath. But I know that that is not what I should be doing. So uh, it, it's easier to go that way than breath because when I'm more mindful about the breath my mind goes somewhere else as well like thinking about something and then yeah. again I come to breath so what is the best way when that happens so the, uh, the best way is to use the breath as the anchor for the meditation because the breath is a very kind of um, it's very useful for that as how the Buddha explains the various levels of meditation through the using of the breath so I would always recommend to use the breath uh, um, there comes a point when you start to feel maybe piti, sukha, the bliss of meditation, and all of these kind of things. And when that happens, that is when the, if you then have a, like a nimitta, samadhi nimitta, or a light in the mind, that is the time when that light kind of becomes more interesting. So first of all, you have to kind of do this in the right sequence. I will come back more to the Anapanasati Sutta later on, but ideally breath, calming down of the breath, then the joy, the happiness, then comes these lights at that particular point. So it's important to wait to the right time so that there's enough power to the light, it has enough bliss to it to really be useful for meditation. If you do it too early, it may not be the kind of light that you actually want to use. Stay with the breath. If you find that there is too, the thoughts are too distracting, then what you need to do is then uh, to use a contemplation to overcome the thoughts. Uh, yeah? One of the ways of overcoming thoughts is to enjoy the meditation more, uh, enjoy the peace, enjoy whatever it is that you have. The more you enjoy the uh, meditation, the less interesting the thoughts will be. So generally you can let go of them. Uh, another way is just, like I was saying before, that actually thinking is kind of completely useless. Uh, it doesn't get us anywhere. Yeah? You, Thinking is about the world, and it, maybe sometimes you solve a problem while thinking is another problem waiting behind it. Yeah, and it goes on forever like that. And we've been doing this is why we're still here after all these lifetimes. We're still here because we have been solving problems that don't have a solution. And uh, so you realize that the future is not built by thinking about it. The reason we think is because we're trying to somehow make the future. That's what the thinking is about, yeah? solving problems or in, uh, thinking about enjoyments or whatever. But actually, that is not how the future is built. The way the future is built and made uh, is by being peaceful now, uh, making good karma, having a good heart, doing a bit of metta, having compassion. This is how we make the future. Uh, and once that kind of clicks, uh, yeah, actually, I'm not Thinking is complete waste of time. Once you kind of feel that, uh, the mind tends to move away from that. Uh, not always, because sometimes the mind just wants to be distracted because it's not, you're not enjoying what you're doing. So also finding some enjoyment is also important. Uh, so build it up slowly. 
Don't go to the breath too early. Allow the mind time to calm down and become peaceful. Uh, yeah? And then uh, gradually you get there. Uh. The other big problem in meditation is, of course, tiredness of the mind. Yeah? It's very common and very easy to feel tired because we've been very busy or whatever. Uh. And the answer to overcoming tiredness is always to, first of all, allow the mind to relax and let go of the tiredness. And then secondly, to enjoy again, to give rise to the happiness of the mind. Uh, I'll talk more about how to do that later on, because it's a very important part of this whole practice. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone? Uh, everyone okay? Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. I've noticed that I've uh, improved at calming the mind with meditation and more tranquility and peace in the meditation, but it's kind of a dull sort of attention gets kind of dull, and I've noticed that in my daily life too, I, I'm not as mentally sharp with thinking. Yeah. So I'm curious how to calm the thinking in meditation, but still have the mind sharp. Yeah, this is kind of the holy grail of meditation practice, yeah? yeah. Uh, and so there's a tendency either to be too tense and then be mindful, uh, because you're using the willpower, uh, or not be, be really relaxed but dull. Yeah, this kind of kind of swings between those two things. And that middle way, that's kind of that is the holy grail, and that's kind of what we're trying to do. Huh? And uh, the answer is really just to uh, find, ultimately it is to f enjoy what we're doing. Huh? And this is what you find in the sutta, as the Buddha talks about these anusatis, uh, yeah, recollections of the mind, and they are always the beginning point of any success in meditation. Huh? And these an anusatis are, you know. As I was saying before, having like a relationship with the Buddha, understanding who the Buddha is, remembering the Buddha, I think, wow, I got the Buddha as the teacher. Whoa, I can't believe it. <laughs> and you feel so happy because you have got someone that's so extraordinary. And this is kind of the idea of the Buddha as an extraordinary. He's a human being, but kind of extraordinary, that you actually feel joyful just by having that Buddha as your teacher. Sometimes that's too hard to do. So sometimes we have to do something more simple. And a simple thing is the Kalyana, Kalyana Anusati, remembering your Kalanamittas. Uh, and so you think that, wow, I'm here with all these other good people. Uh, these are wonderful people trying to do their very best and living a good life. Uh, yeah, They're not perfect, but they're trying really hard. That's where they have a lot of respect. Uh, you're here with the kind of members of the Sangha. The Buddha is there, in the, found in this little laptop here. The Buddha's residing in this laptop over here. Uh, and you have, so you have, you, basically it's just a, joyful occasion to be in good company and be with good wholesome people uh, and just reflecting on that can actually give an uplift of the mind uh, yeah? and then there's more general things like uh, remembering that you have been living well for a long period of time but what I call the sila nusati recollection of your uh, your general conduct you've been keeping the precepts or living well and all of these kind of things uh, and sometimes you just feel Good about yourself, yeah, because you're living well. You feel a sense of, wow, I'm living well. And so all of these things are just ways of, uh, you can feel gratitude. Uh, gratitude is part of what I was talking about before. Uh, uh, all of these things are ways of kind of lifting up the mind, giving it a boost of energy. Uh. So there's two things you have to do. You have to allow the dullness to dissipate naturally because the mind is tired uh, for, for all kinds of reasons. Uh, and then when the time is right, and this is where you have to experiment a little bit, when the time is kind of right, that is where you kind of move on to try to add a little bit of joy, a little bit of kind of brightness to the mind by the gentle nudging of the mind, reflecting on the mind, with the mind carefully in this way. This is how it tends to work, ideally, when it works. Okay, so uh, everyone else happy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Uh, it's good to be better to be happy, not to not to be happy. So uh, uh, let's please just carry on. We have another twenty five minutes or so, so not uh, super long. Uh, and uh, great. Okay. Good.